when threading your serger, this is your th threading tension, auto tension dial here. Your settings tells you in your manual which one you need to do for your which stitch. For the four thread stretch stitch, we need A. What I do is no matter what's with the machine, I always click it off and then back to the A. So the levers are all in the correct tension settings. Then I thread the machine, and then when I'm done threading, before I even do a test stitch, I go back and I switch off the A, or off whatever setting it is, then switch back to it. Because sometimes when you're threading it, moving it, it's really easy to bump the levers out of position. So just switch off it and switch back. We're going to start by threading the thread number one. We're going to put it in the upper thread guides. Seat it in the tension disc. Floss it a little if you need to. Go down here to the first thread guide put it through the second thread guide down here there's two more thread colored thread guides marked in green you need to get through both of those this is where your trees tweezers come in handy guide one guide two grab your thread pull it straight up Make sure it's not caught on anything. Then there's a little metal thread guide here. You swirl the thread around it and then thread your thread into the eye of the spreader. Then you pull the fabric to the back. Make sure you go under the presser foot. And I put the thread right at about the 10 o'clock position. And that's the green thread or the upper looper. This is threading the lower looper. It's a little more complicated than the upper, th upper looper. Put your thread in the thread guide on the top of the machine. Seat it into the tension discs. Floss it a little if you need to. This one goes into this thread guide here first. And then this is a double thread guide. The front is for the cover stitch. The back is for the serger. So put it through the back one. Now there's three red guides here. One, two, and three. You thread those. Got it through the first one, second one. At this point I pulled the thread to give me a little more room to get to the third one which is tucked up in here in the machine. Get the thread through that one. Grab it. Pull it directly up like this. I'm going to move the camera in for this particular shot. I'm going to pull the stitch finger back to the R position to give me a little bit more room. This is the little lever that has to go back under the needle plate to put the thread hook back here. What I do is I push it halfway forward, take the thread and push it toward the back and pull, let it come a little bit down.
and then you get the thread behind that and into the v-notch. See how it's in the v-notch? You take that and seat it all the way back into the needle plate area. And you can see how it's connected back in there. Now, you need to thread the lower looper eye. I move the machine around a little bit. I make sure the lower looper thread is out of the way. Thread the eye of the lower looper. And make sure when you do this that the red thread or the lower looper goes into the spreader and up and over the upper threader, upper looper. Pull it to the back. And then make sure it goes under the presser foot. And I put this at about a, a 10 o'clock also with the green thread. And that's how you thread the lower looper. Now we're on thread number three, which is the right needle. Seat it into the tension discs. Put it through this thread guide here. Go over to the first horizontal thread guide. There's three slots back here. Your right needle goes into the backmost slot up over the thread bridge here, down here, and then there's another horizontal thread guide here with three slots. Your right needle goes into the rightmost slot. And then this is the needle bar here. There's a thread bar here and a thread bar here. This thread bar is a two-part bar. It's a top bar. There's another bar underneath it. What you need to do is get your thread, go behind the top part of it, and there's three slots in that one also. You need to get your thread into the rightmost slot and make sure it's in front of the smaller bar that's underneath it. I'll have a picture of it in the video. And then you take your thread and put it behind this lower bar. Now you're ready to thread the needle. Pull your thread to the back. Make sure you're going under the presser foot. And I put the needles threads at 11 o'clock. The looper threads are at 10 o'clock. The needle thread is at 11 o'clock. Now it's time to do the left needle. Get it in the tension disc. Go through this thread slot here. This first horizontal guide, you put it through the middle slot. Go up over the thread bridge, down and through the middle slot of this guide here. Then the same thing you did with the first thread is you put it behind the top part, get it into the second slot and then put it down here. This one slipped out. Make sure this one's behind there and make sure this one is behind there. And then thread your needle. Pulling your thread down and underneath the the presser foot. Now at this point you need to make sure your stitch finger is in the end position and you engage the knife, put it up here. So stitch finger in the end, knife engaged. Then turn your machine on, 
lower your presser foot, grab all four of your threads. You don't have to pull them, just hold them so it, you can give just a tiny little bit to tension and then chain off. And there you go, a successful threading. Then you want to test it with a piece of fabric. This is a piece of fleece. Put it here with the knife in the up position. And then when you're done surging, make sure you do good follow through. I have another video about this. I have a couple of them. Most people get anxious and start angling before you finish sewing and start pulling to the left. Don't. Let the machine go off the fabric just once one stitch and then slowly guide the fabric back not pulling just guiding it back gently and there you go see how it makes a square corner instead of it pulling it if you pull it off too quick to the corner.